retreat. Um, I remember feeling this relief, like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I started reading the Bible every day, praying, you know, like most Christians do. Um, But since I was so young, everything kind of slowly faded. Um, As I entered into high school, everything kind of changed. I started to try and fit in with everyone, and that resulted in a lot of sinning. Um, And a lot of rebellion, not wanting to go to church. But then once I got older and started college, I kind of started focusing on my career, started trying to live a better Christian life. Um, But then the devil decided to surprise me. Um, And that's when my spiritual journey turned very dark. He decided to send a guy, and at first, you know, this guy was pretty great. He ended up being my boyfriend. Um, And it seemed like God had sent him for me. He was perfect in every way. Um, But then after about one year, um, things took a turn for the worst. He started becoming very verbally abusive. um, And then not long after, sexually and physically abusive. And then he attempted to kill me at one point. Um, So life got really hard. I got kicked out of the house a few times and fell very, very deep into sin, the complete opposite of where God was. I was failing all of my college classes and life was becoming really hard. Um, When I was at my absolute lowest and I thought there was nowhere to go, um, you know, things just got worse. And whenever he would threaten to break up with me, um, I would go crazy, right? I would freak out. Crazy enough to where I even tried to commit suicide. And then after about two years of living in this torment, um, I agreed with my family and church friends to try and get help. So I went to a therapist for a while, and then that's where I was diagnosed with something called Stockholm Syndrome. And for those of you that don't know what that is, it's basically a mental thing that happens when someone is kidnapped and they end up falling in love with their kidnapper. So I was stuck. I literally couldn't go anywhere. Um, But we eventually got a restraining order against him, got cops involved. Um, And of course, my dad threatened to kill him. You know, yeah, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) But at this point, I was still so far wrapped around him that I was very reluctant to still leave him. But one day I just felt like I had absolutely nothing left and nowhere to go. So I fell to the floor and decided just to cry out to the Lord, hoping that he would hear me if he was still there and still cared. I was screaming for the Lord to help me. And literally after those words, Lord, will you help me, came out of my mouth, I immediately stopped crying. I had no more desire to be with my boyfriend. I had no feeling of love. It completely disappeared immediately. I called him and told him that I was done. I never wanted to speak to him, and I haven't since then. You know, I thought everything was going uphill, but then it didn't. My ex-boyfriend started stalking me, showing up everywhere I went, had to get a police escort going through college. And at that moment, I decided that I needed to introduce God back into my life. So I started attending church more frequently, And eventually, he stopped showing up. Life got a lot better after that, but I still had this big, empty hole in my heart. And after this, I decided to stay away from dating. I vowed to never have a boyfriend ever again. But, of course, that's what what God didn't have for my life. And that's where my wonderful husband, Mikey, comes in. (laughs) So after I took a step back to kind of try and figure out my life and try and settle back into being a better Christian, um, you know, oh, sorry, I lost my place. (laughs) Mikey's name's only on there once. (laughs) Okay, so I'd always tried to have a boyfriend, always tried, I wanted to be dependent on a guy. So I tried to step back and, you know, not do that. But at this point, you know, I was still living in sin, trying to get back into being a better Christian. But when I first talked to Mikey, you know, we just said we were just going to be friends. 
I have no intentions of dating, but when we first met on Christmas Eve, um, and I locked eyes with him, I started having these visions of having a life to, together, growing old, and having babies. <laughs> and I had this really strong desire of wanting kids, and this is shocking because my whole life, I never wanted kids. I absolutely did not want children of my own. So, of course, I fell deeply in love with him. <laughs> Prayed about it with our families and with each other. And after six months of dating, we got married. <laughs> and now we're going on four years. And I knew then that the Lord had sent Mikey to help me heal my heart, but to also help strengthen my spirit in the Lord. And afterwards, we started going to church together, trying to lead a Christian life together. Um, and during our, mes uh, during our marriage, we had a lot of signs from God that he was helping us, providing for us. We'd have money and gift cards and checks just coming in the mail. I have no, one, no idea where they're coming from. Um, but of course, the devil saw how happy we were and decided to start attacking me with health problems. And at first, I didn't know it was the devil. Um, I just thought it was because, you know, I went from very bland southern food to crazy spicy Korean food. So, but no matter how many doctors I went to or how many tests I did, they couldn't find anything. They had no idea. But then one day, out of the blue, God decided to place Korea on my mind. So, of course, I moved to Korea and forced Mikey with me. Okay. <laughs> And when we first got here, we traveled around and everything was great. And surprisingly, my health problems stopped, completely cut off. No more health problems. Everything was fine. And then after about two months in Korea, we started looking for a new church. And that's when we found Saving Grace through Megan. And of course, fell in love with this place. Um, but not long after um, we started attending, my health problems started coming back. So being my stubborn self, I went to the doctors again trying to take all kinds of medicine, but still, nothing was found. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. And then that's when I knew that it was the devil trying to attack me spiritually. Uh, especially when I started thinking about the rest of my family. My whole family on both sides started getting severely sick. Family members dying. So at that point, I knew that it was, it was the devil trying to drag me back down. Especially when I would get the most sick on Sundays or Saturday nights, of course, preventing me from being able to come to church. But then, Pastor Paul, of course, started rebuking me. <laughs> and I realized it was very gentle. It was, it was very gentle. <laughs> but then I realized I needed to suck it up. I wasn't dying. So I decided to go to church whether I liked it or not. And ever since I made that decision, I haven't felt sick since. <laughs> and it's been a year and a half since we've been to Korea, and I love it, especially this church. We love everyone here, especially Pastor Paul and wife Deborah. Um, and after becoming members for a few months, I decided to rededicate my life to the Lord and get rebaptized. And of course, you know, I still face challenges, the devil trying to drag me down, but trying to work back up to getting closer to the Lord. Um, but I'm still trying to live a good life as best I can. Um, but of course, we deal with sin every day. Um, but this is by far, I can say, the happiest my life has ever been. So, thank you for listening. <laughs> Man, hey, I wish, I wish I was a pastor back then. Oh, man, I would have got that boy on. Oh, I would have headlocked him like this, you know what I'm saying? Man, I, man, I would have just, man, I would have turned him up. But, uh, yeah, hey. Yeah, yeah, that was the devil trying to get you down, not, not to come to church, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jenna, we love you. Mm. We love Mikey. We love Mikey, all right? Yeah, man, you guys are, you guys, you guys are in the right place. And hope you guys stay with us for a long, long time. Yeah. Amen. All right. Please, sisters, please come up.
Lamentation 3, 22, 23. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They're new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Dear Heavenly Father, we lift up Jenna to you today, giving thanks for her life and the powerful testimony she has shared with us. We're amazed by your grace, love, power, exalting you as the God who redeems, restores, and heals in every circumstance. We also praise you for the blessings you have poured into her life, especially for her husband, Mikey, and for leading them together in love. We ask that you continue to bless their marriage, that they grow they would grow even closer to each other and to you, relying on your wisdom and grace in every season. We trust that you will always guide her, protect her, and bless her in every aspect of her life. We give you all the glory, Lord, for you are worthy of our praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.